Good day everyone. I'm pleased to have four teachers here with me today with some breaking news from their community service initiative at Convent Bukit Nanas. Without wasting any more precious time we have, let's hear their experience. So the first aspect we're going to be talking about is leadership skills. So Serene, would you like to ask your fellow teachers some questions regarding this topic? Yeah, sure. So Nina, what are the important values you demonstrated as a leader when you conducted the workshop? Well, some of the important values I think I learned or demonstrated basically was the first one is patience. I think I had to have a lot of patience with some of my team members as it wasn't easy and I had to understand some of them were actually, you know, stuck with assignments and we had to give and take during this whole time. Okay, thank you Nina. So for us, uh, I would like to ask you, what is the difficult part of being a leader during the workshop? I think one of the difficulties um, being a leader is definitely um, gathering my team members because we, are, we all have different schedules and therefore we have to find time to actually meet up and make an effort to plan a lesson together and I think that's the most difficult part and also I think as a leader you need to um, not only gather the people but also lead them on what exactly they have to do and therefore you have to be very clear about it yourself. Yeah, so I think that is the difficult part. Okay, thank you, Esther. So, Shalini, as a leader, how do you motivate your team during your workshop? During the workshop, I regularly ask uh, for feedbacks uh, from our group members before we conduct our lesson plans so that if I have any changes, we can mend it and they feel motivated when their feedbacks and opinions are being appreciated and take, uh, considering when I consider it and make changes, they feel appreciated. Another thing is, um, I regularly provide positive feedbacks and constructive feedback. So, during the work lesson plan, they can work effectively and conduct the activity with the students um, with confidence. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Serene. So now let's move on to Shalini. In the aspect of social responsibility, what questions do you have for your fellow teachers? Esther, how have you developed the sense of social responsibility in you throughout the workshop? Um, I think throughout the workshop, I think I realized there are actually a lot of social problems that as a part of the community, I can actually help with. For example, um, being a teacher, I can actually help with the students who have difficulties in learning, like giving them um, extra lessons uh, outside of school and then give them like more guidance when they're doing their homework so that they can actually improve in their learning, which would de uh, therefore contribute in their future um, learning and also um, be being able to be a successful person. Yeah. So what about you, Nina? How have you developed the sense of social responsibility in you throughout the workshop? Um, well, in the sense of social responsibility, I think um, I managed to actually see how much we lack in our public schools nowadays in terms of uh, language, language education. A lot of students can't speak English fluently and that's why they struggle to actually um, to, to actually learn something in English, they struggle because of that. So I feel that as a teacher, I have to do my part in teaching them language. Although it may be bilingual, I may have to teach them both in English and Malay where it will be a lot more time needed and a lot more work, a lot more effort. But I, I do feel responsib uh, responsible to contribute in this sense for the future generation. Thank you, Nina. So the next question that I'm going to post to you, Serene, how do you think you have contributed to the society during the workshop? I think that I've contributed to the society during the workshop is by using recycled materials for our experiment. For example, for the topic of properties of materials, we use empty Yakut canisters for the children to, to check whether it's sink or float or waterproof or non-waterproof. Thank you. Okay, thank you Shalini. So next we have Esther. So what are some of the questions you would like to ask your fellow teachers regarding the awareness of problems that call for action. Right, so Nina, what problems did you face during the weeks you conducted the workshops? For the first week was one of the biggest problems I, I actually faced because um, I planned lesson a lesson-based 
with technology, inclusive include inclusion of technology. So when we went there, we were told that we could not have any technology provided to us, meaning we didn't have a projector, we didn't have a screen to and we prepared a video. So we did not have any of those those technology mm-hmm. provided to us to use. So that was one of the problems that we faced, which we were quite stranded with. Um, beyond that, I don't think I had any major problems. It was just mainly the first week. Yeah, do you think that problem is actually related to like social issues, like how the school has no enough resources? Um, very high likely, yes. Um, because probably I've seen a lot, like I've seen that they have the holder for the projector, but they don't actually have a projector provided there. So probably it's part of the reason why, um, why we bring it back to social to the social context of it. So, yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, so what about you, Shalini? What problems did you face during the workshop? The problems I faced during the workshops is uh, when we asked the students to make their own group for the activity, they seem to group up with their own race, like um, Malays tend to pick up their Malay friends as their group members and Indians choose their Indian friends as their group members and when when they choose their own friends they tend to make more noise rather than uh, concentrating on their activity itself that that's the only thing that I feel very challenge uh, I feel very challenged to overcome that problem in them thank you okay so for Serene in your opinion do you think that there was any form of discrimination in the school or during the workshop? Um, so as Shalini has mentioned that um, Malay tend to group up with the, their Malay friends while Indian tend to group with their Indian friends. I think that this is because Malay think that, thinks that the, their English is not that good so I think that they feel discriminated. So in their own group they can speak their, their own language which is Basa Malaysia and in Indian they can speak English better so they tend to be with their own social group. Okay. okay, great. So, now I have some questions for you guys as well. Firstly, I would like to ask Esther this question. So what is your takeaway of working in groups throughout this and throughout this workshop? Um, I think one of the main takeaways from this workshop, um, working in groups, is definitely how I learn to um, accommodate to other people's need because even though I'm the type of person who is um, more organized and I tend to want to do things in advance I have to compromise with um, my other group members who have also very busy schedules and I think this is a very big um, learning for me because um, it is hard to complete tasks without everyone's cooperation so I think um, compromising is one of the big takeaway for me yeah okay great Okay, thank you very much, Esther. So now my question to Serene. My question to you is, what were the challenges you faced working with different cosmates? Uh, the challenges that I faced working with different cosmates is that um, our time is different, so um, to plan a lesson plan is quite hard for us to meet up and discuss it um, face-to-face. So usually we just use online platform to discuss, for example, Google Docs, and we just discuss our ideas there. So, do you think it was effective in that sense? It was not really effective because... Um, it's quite hard to have your own, your own ideas coming out, right? It, it's not as clear as meeting face-to-face, yeah. right? Okay. The instruction is not clear yeah. to give up. Okay, alright, thanks. Alright, great. So now moving on to Shalini. The question I have to pose to you regarding um, cooperation is... How well did everyone manage to work in groups, in your opinion? How do you think it worked out? In my opinion, uh, we worked well. Although we, have, uh, we don't have much time to meet physically, but then we discussed all our lesson plans and points through online platform, which is Google Docs, where we can um, make changes to the lesson plans and provide feedback what we, we think and what we have uh, to edit and make changes to the lesson plans. I think it worked very effectively when all of us know what we are going to conduct with the students. 
so somehow it was effective to a certain extent yeah right? okay. yeah thank you all right now we have come to the end of the show thank you for being with us as we share about our takeaways from the community service initiative goodbye